Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to talk about the pros and cons of gas and propane generators as well as inverter generators versus classic solar lithium ion battery systems. Now I didn't say solar generators because a lot of you sensitive snowflakes out there take issue with the fact that I call it a generator in some of my other videos. I understand it's not PC to call it a solar generator anymore. And I'm going to concede that point. Essentially, this takes gasoline, which is a combustible fuel, and propane, and it generates electricity. Electricity is harvested from the solar panel, which technically could be considered a generator in itself, although it's not necessarily creating any new energy. It's simply acting as a conduit for the sun's energy. So whatever, whatever you want to call it, today's video is about the differences between these two systems. And we're going to talk about why I think that this thing is going the way of the dinosaur soon and that these types of things are the future. Let's get to it. So you may be asking yourself, why would I need electricity if the shit hits the fan? Well, the answer is simple. 99% of you have required electricity to survive for your entire life. Thinking that you're just going to be able to adapt to a world without heat, without warm water, without air conditioning, without life-sustaining systems, powering your electronic devices like flashlights and radios that you might need to communicate an emergency situation, among many other creature comforts that you take for granted, would be, well, quite stupid. In most places in the world nowadays, especially in densely populated urban environments, electricity is not a luxury, it's a necessity. What's more is that there are some people who actually rely on life-sustaining machines like CPAP machines in order to stay alive. If the shit hits the fan and the lights go out and they don't have a backup power supply, it's going to be good night sooner than later. Even the simple things like cooking without microwaves, without stoves or ovens, you are going to need some fuel source to heat up your food. Even though this isn't absolutely necessary, our digestive systems have evolved to consume cooked food. So good luck chewing on that raw meat or cooking over an open fire on your 15-story apartment building. That will quickly free up more resources for the rest of us. If you have a surveillance system, it's of great benefit to you and your family to keep that running if the lights were to go out. But if you have to do it in such a way that it tracks everybody within earshot that you have stuff, then it's probably counterproductive. This is why as I'm going to talk about combustion engine generators, generally speaking, are a terrible consideration for a long-term grid down scenario. Now for a short-term scenario, yes, they absolutely have a function, particularly in rural areas, especially in wintertime, if you don't have wood stoves and fireplaces to heat your home. Now there's a few ways you can go with generators. You can go with a stationary home-based combustion generator system which uses diesel or gasoline, propane or even natural gas. The latter of course may not make it your way if there is a widespread disruption of services due to the fact that natural gas requires electricity to be regulated and distributed throughout the power grid. That said, in my opinion, this is probably one of the best options for people who live off grid to have some sort of permanent stationary generator system. Now, if you're in the city, you may want to go with one of the traditional non-inverter generators. I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of all of these in a minute. These obnoxiously loud, gas-guzzling hunks of metal will most definitely power your house, but at the same time, they're going to attract every desperate soul within a 100 meter to 1 mile radius. And of course, many of these are going to be grade A marauding a-holes. Next is the inverter generator. It burns cleaner, it's more efficient, and it's quieter. But it's still a piece of junk, in my opinion, compared to the last method, which is some sort of portable battery plus an inverter, a charge controller, and some sort of renewable energy source like solar, wind, hydroelectric, or kinetic energy. Now let's talk about the downsides of traditional combustion engine generators. Of course, fuel is inevitably going to run out and it's going to run out a lot faster than you think. Yes, there are some people out there who are capable of MacGyvering various wood gasification systems that are going to allow them to exploit the woods and convert that into electricity. 
but not many people are going to have the patience or the handiness or the skills in order to build such a complex and potentially dangerous device. A normal gas generator pulling a 5000 watt load, which is probably enough to power a good chunk of what's going on in your house at any given moment, the bare essentials anyways, is going to take approximately 18 gallons of gasoline per day. And it's going to take a lot more in propane because propane produces less energy when burned. Now, even though I'm a 100% advocate of lithium generators like the Energy Kodiak, I did get this dual fuel system on sale from Canadian Tire, also known as Crappy Tire, because half the stuff you buy there ends up breaking down or just is very anticlimactic in its ability to impress once you leave the store. Nonetheless, I got a good deal by Canadian Tire standards anyways, which really isn't a good deal. They just get you with that trick pricing and I fell for it this time, but whatever. I got myself one of these dual fuel generators as a backup for my main system, which is going to be solar and lithium based. Currently, I'm running the iNergy Kodiak system, which I've used many times before. That's my go-to emergency power supply, but I also use it around the house for a variety of things. I use it on trips. I use it in the woods. It's a great unit and its successor, the iNergy Apex, which is going to be released very soon. And some people have already got their units. The pre-sale is still on until June 7th. I'm going to be reviewing that next week. Anyways, getting back to generators. Another major downside of these terrible machines is that they are dangerous for so many reasons. You cannot use them inside. If you do happen to be one of the Darwin Olympians who decides to use their gasoline power generator inside, expect to meet your maker within a matter of minutes. It will free up more resources for the rest of us. What's more, having to store that much fuel on hand, not only are you only legally allowed to store so much fuel on hand if you live in an urban environment, but it's of course dangerous to do so and it's a fire hazard. Using the generator itself can also be dangerous if you're not using it properly. Now, yes, there are the one in a million lithium ion batteries that explode on people, but I'm going to guess that there are a lot more accidents that happen with these generators. But most of that risk can be minimized by simply following the instructions to a T. What's more is that these things are going to require a lot of maintenance. You're gonna have to change the oil, every hundred odd hours of running the device and if it breaks down most people do not have the mechanical know-how to repair them there's a lot of moving parts it's not solid state like in lithium ion battery is they're large they're heavy they're cumbersome if you want to transport them good luck getting it into the truck by yourself even if you have superhuman godlike strength like myself, it's not going to happen without a fight. The last thing you need in the zombie apocalypse is to throw out your back and be a totally incapacitated drag on your loved ones. So you may be asking yourself, Nate, why then would you go and buy one of these abhorrent, nauseating, gas-guzzling monstrosities of a machine? And the answer is, until I get my off-grid paradise and I take my solar system to the macro scale, I do need something which is going to be capable of producing a large amount of power, even if for a short time. As I said in the beginning of this video, in a short term, three to seven day grid down scenario, I don't think, at least where I live, that marauders are going to be terrorizing the neighborhood. At least not in any capacity that I'm not going to be able to deal with. It's feasible that I could store enough fuel to get me through that short period of time. But beyond that, forget about it. I'm not even thinking about that when I purchase this generator. Now, if I lived off grid, quote unquote, because nobody's truly off grid, I would get myself one of those larger propane tanks and I would be set for a much longer period of time. And propane, of course, is going to last a lot longer than gasoline. This is why I've got the dual fuel option. As excruciatingly loud as these things are, they still put out more electricity than your typical lithium ion system. The best one on the market, the Energy Kodiak, puts out 1500 watts continuous. There are some systems that put out more, but the price point on those is beyond the reach of most people. <laughs> Most people simply are not at the point where they can go out and get themselves a Tesla wall and a $20,000 solar system. Now there is, of course, inverter generators, which I think this day and age are a complete 
waste of money because what an inverter generator can do, a lithium generator can do. Yes, there are some inverter generators that can do two to 3,000 watts continuous, but in the near future, there's likely going to be lithium-based systems that can do that as well. The Energy Kodiak, the new one, the Apex, is going to be able to do a 3,000 watt peak output as well as 1,500 watts continuous pure sine wave power delivery. And you get that as the same price as an inverter generator, but the inverter generator is louder, it still requires fuel. You cannot power it from the sun. Once you're out of fuel, it's done. Yes, it's slightly more efficient because it's running at variable speeds, whereas a normal traditional generator has to run at a constant RPM, regardless of whether you're using the machine or not. And thus an inverter generator is gonna have cleaner, smoother, more efficient power. It's gonna be lighter, more portable, but it, you're gonna pay for it. It's probably three times the price when you calculate the actual cost per watt. Nothing really beats a lithium generator. It's solid state. There's absolutely zero maintenance. It's super lightweight. It's super portable. It's completely quiet. This is so important in one of these situations. If you wanna be discreet and you don't wanna draw attention to yourself, it's imperative that whatever power source you use be quiet. Even if you're using the best inverter generator, your neighbors are probably still going to be able to hear it. Unless you're using it in an enclosed space, which means that you're probably going to be dead soon anyways. Lithium generators are odorless. They are expandable. And of course, it's renewable. So the Kodiak has 2000 recharge cycles. Even if you are continuously drawing the full power device and using the pass through feature by which you're charging the device as you're actually using it. So you're using 1500 Watts per hour and you're charging it 10 times a day. It's still going to last you a year and the battery is still going to be 80% efficient. After 2000 recharge cycles, it goes down to 80% efficiency. The only cons of course, is that there is a low power output and there is a high initial cost, but not compared to most inverter generators. In fact, the Kodiak right now, until June 7th, you can still save 350 bucks. The pre-sale price was 1300 bucks with the Canadian Prepper coupon code. They've jacked that up to 1450 or something like that, something in that ballpark because they just couldn't keep up with the demand, but you're not gonna find a better deal. It doesn't look as pretty and it doesn't look as pretty and it doesn't masquerade as something that it isn't like some of the more fancy looking battery packs on the market, but it is an industrial renewable portable power system for the average person, especially if you're one of the bazillions of people who live in apartment buildings around the United States that would be one of the units that I would recommend. It's really the only unit you're gonna get away with. Now, hopefully you have a balcony or something like that that you can set up a solar panel, but there are other alternatives as well. Hopefully in a prolonged situation, you do have a contingency plan to bug the hell out of there before the roads get jammed and it's impossible to get the hell out of there safely. Anyways, I think that gas generators are going the way of the dinosaur. I don't think they have much longer left before they're that relevant. Lithium and solar is fast closing the gap. So just be patient, let the nerds figure it out. In the meantime, get yourself one of the best generators on the market, the Energy Kodiak system. I would suggest getting one of those before getting the big gas guzzling hunk of metal, but that really does depend on where you live. If you live in a smaller abode where you're living in close quarters or you're uh, doing shared accommodation or you're living in an apartment or something like that, then you'll probably want to invest in a lithium generator first. If you do live off grid, particularly if it's winter time, one more thing to note about the price point of traditional combustion engine generators is that it seems like they're cheaper at the start, but you have to factor in the cost of gasoline. Yes, an initial investment of solar and lithium battery is going to be a lot more expensive, but after even just a few weeks of continuous use of a gasoline powered generator, even propane powered, you're gonna find out that it's actually already cost you more than it, and it would to generate that same amount of electricity from the lithium system. So in my personal opinion, I can't stand these traditional generators, but you have to have one as backup if you're a serious prepper, even though you know it's just gonna be a royal pain in the ass, 
get one if you find one on sale, but strongly consider investing in lithium. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, Canadian Prepper Out. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.